What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Unfiltered, Unfiltered Love Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. So, uh, welcome to the show. You are actually our first guest. I'm so honored. Yay! Would you Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. <laughs> go, go for it. My name is Brenda Marie Davies. I have a YouTube and podcast called God is Gray. Mm, nice. nice. So, mm-hmm. All right. So there's, of course, a link in the description. Or if you're listening on podcast platform, uh, make sure you check out God is Gray. Well, welcome to uh, my little garage recording studio. I love it. Welcome. Were you guys <laughs> just filming some videos? Yeah. We, we filmed two videos for one on each channel. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, yeah. give me a little synopsis here. I mean, we both do commentary on youtube very similar content i come from a non-religious perspective and she comes from a christian perspective and yeah even though we're different we have pretty much the same social views huh. so yeah. it's really cool and now you guys are here with a jew <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're really, really challenging me right now though. yeah no, it's, it's <laughs> cool it's well not that challenging uh and then also we have almost another guest uh oh. Almost mm. in the, I mean, in the, definitely in the room. The, he's ready. Yeah. He's, he's a full human right now. Yeah, yeah. So if you're listening in the audio, she is very pregnant. Mm-hmm. I think you're like the most pregnant I've ever seen anyone. Yeah. Well, I'm literally, there's a possibility I could go into labor tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not even right, not right now. Well, I was telling Jacqueline <laughs> it would be amazing content in a very shallow way to be like, and my water just broke, and then do a little vlog about her rushing me to the hospital. Wow. I can I can deliver babies. <laughs> I have oh, been Or, trying. yeah, stay in your yeah. room. If you guys fill the bathtub for me. Oh, yeah, we have a bathtub. For it. I've, been, I've been trying to convince her that we should just do the bathtub water. here someday. No, I want to be surrounded by a thousand doctors. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Well, uh, I'm assuming we're going to be talking a lot about uh, your your upcoming birth here today. Yeah. Which uh, could be tomorrow. I really hope so. So tomorrow you're going in and having something with a membrane, you a said? A membrane sweep. A membrane sweep. I'm no expert. It's like everything is so learn as you go, mm-hmm. which it's, I, I know everyone says, no one tells the truth about birth and no one gives details about, you know, whatever the whole journey. But when you go through it, you really realize how many empty gaps there are. I can't believe women aren't more open and especially with their daughters being like, this sucked, this sucked, this sucked. <laughs> and just the logistics of everything. And then you add your emotions, which are all out of balance, and mm-hmm. your relationship, if you're lucky enough to have one while you're going through it. It's a wild journey. So if I ask any questions, you have to forgive me if they're, like, really bad. <laughs> no, uh, I want them to be really bad. I think they'd be amazing. Okay. <laughs> and there's really no dumb questions because, like I said, people don't talk about it as openly. Like, I put out a video today, and I try to be more uh, gentle on the YouTube because you can get dissenting voices and so much hate. And, um, so it's just easier for me to be like, I just said confession. I didn't love being pregnant. And really the title should be like, I hated every second of pregnancy. (laughs) And like, that's the truth. Yeah. I would assume that just based on how I, I know there's back pains and nausea and all these things that you have to go through I can't even imagine the hormones but almost everybody that I've heard talk about it says how beautiful it is and you just you're glowing well you're like so close (laughs) to the end yeah that's really easy for you to say (laughs) it actually makes me want to punch you in the face like I'll do it for you (laughs) no that's fine it's fine no like two months ago or something everyone was like home stretch home stretch and I was like I will stretch you over my knee and like (laughs) give you a fumbling because it just my boyfriend, too, has said it. He's like, wow, this just flew by. And I'm like, yeah, maybe because you had your <laughs> life. Like, I mean, his life had a lot of alterations to it. We can talk about that as well. But, like, you know, he didn't lose any bodily autonomy. He didn't have to make sacrifices in that way that you have to when you're the pregnant person and you're responsible for taking care of the life. So, like, it it's the longest year of my entire life. And Change also, your diet? Change everything. Your change. It changes everything. Changes your social life. Your the way you eat, the way you move through the world. Like, it's crazy. I didn't realize how profoundly impactful it would be on every different element of myself. Dang. Something to look forward to here. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, you know, I, I am <sighs> expecting. <laughs> no, but we do want to do that one day. So it's really very fun to have you on the podcast and I, I want to hear, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, all the things that kind of go with it because I haven't really been 
told what it's like. I haven't been given realistic expectations because like I said, most people say that you just glow and that it's beautiful. And yeah, I, I doesn't, that doesn't really sound like how I would feel. Yeah. I was really shocked by how it actually feels. And I do not want to discourage anyone from getting mm -hmm. pregnant or having a baby. And something I do have to clarify is how blessed I've been. So, so, so lucky. Every single time I've gone to the doctor, the baby's perfect. The amniotic fluid is perfect. The everything was, they use the word perfect probably 50 times. And I know that not every pregnant person has the privilege of that experience. And um, also my body has cooperated like, in like in an unfair way <laughs> yeah. like I've definitely gained I've got like a booty I've got boobs that I've never had before I've got some like arms that I've never had before and that's all just like uncomfortable it feels physically uncomfortable because a lot of it is for me and my body type just extra so I do feel it but you know at the same time I have friends that had the huge cankles and a lot of different body changes that were really hard for them to bounce back from. And it's TBD for me. <laughs> so let's, uh, I, so when my whole life, my parents have always told me uh, my, I was going to say, let's start at the beginning, but then, you know, my whole life, my parents told me it was, it was a, a Halloween. Oh, it was a God. Halloween night. This story again. Uh. They were uh, dressed as, as uh, dole raisins and they were drinking Jägermeister. And, oh, uh, this is the okay, the conception story. Well, I want to start. With, <laughs> I'm curious about your whole. I'm curious about the whole thing. We don't have to go into you details, go into but, yeah. But you you can. But um, but then everything, every little element of it. Let's start at the beginning. I'm so curious. Sure. Um, well, I already told you guys that my partner is a private person, so it's like you know I could share a million things that have just been really interesting and beautiful and difficult about just the dynamic, the reality of being like we are two individual people signing up for this wild journey that you know neither of us were really dreaming about or trying to do. We've both been really independent people. We're both in our thirties, and I was not the girl like playing with Barbies and. My Barbies all had careers, let's say. Mm. Like, I was always like, yeah, I want to, you know, do big things with my life and writing and whatever else. And babies and marriage and stuff were always somewhere distant in my head. And then when you get in your 30s as a woman, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. it's like there was a... Um, I don't know. There's an insecurity. Like if you've never been pregnant before, even by accident or something, a lot of girls when they hit their 30s, they're like, I hope I can even get pregnant because you're not even sure. And yeah. So all of that said, basically, I had a best friend uh, named David. <laughs> and oh, yeah, it's a nice. good sign. It's a good name. <laughs> you know what it, do you know what it means in Hebrew? No. Beloved. Oh, I really love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, so I had my beloved, and um, but he wasn't my beloved yet. He was just, like, my best friend, and we'd hang out two to three times a week. Sometimes we'd hook up, sometimes not, and really it was because, actually, of our age and, like, where we, where we wanted to go in life. Like, he was like, I never want to have kids. I never want to get married, and I was like, all right, well, I'm reaching up in my 30s and I have to actually think about those things. So I sort of had him on some side burner and I like loved him so much. We were in love with each other the whole time. But I was like, well, we can't actually be together. So I have to keep dating other people to see what else is out there to actually have a family and stuff because I knew I did want that. So we do friends with benefits for like two years or a little less and I was definitely getting to the point where I was like I can't emotionally do this anymore because when he'd leave my house I didn't know what he was up to or what he was doing I was also dating other people and he was taking up a lot of my mind and I don't think I was actually open to genuinely meeting someone else because of that so I told him all of this and I was like we kind of either have to get together for real which means that you would actually actually have to say yeah we can have kids together which was a crazy thing to say but I was like this is just the reality of what it is and um and I was like or we part ways completely because I can't distract myself with you anymore 
So he was supposed to go away for the summer and he was going to be like writing this book that he's writing, which is amazing. And (laughs) right before he left, our plan was go away for the summer. Think about what we want to do with our relationship. Come back and let me know if we're going to be together or not. So literally, I think a week or two before he left, I go in the bathroom and I realized my period was like five days late. And I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that. So I would would panic. (laughs) Yeah, I actually didn't panic because, like, whenever I had that experience, I have, like, a stack of pregnancy tests in my house, and I would just pull one out and not think about it and just, like, whatever. And I've never, you know, I'm not pregnant. So this time I pulled it out. I'm all casual. I'm doing my makeup after I pee on it. And then I look, and it has a plus sign. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, that cannot be real. That is not real. And I started crying. I called my best friend Haven. And I was just going, no, no. And she was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, why? And she was just like, you're at the right age to this, you like to do this. You love this person. He loves you. You might not be together, but you're going to make a beautiful baby together. She is a very spiritual friend of mine. I love her so much. And I didn't know it at the time, but I definitely believe she was right. So Aww. that's how that started. And the more logistical answer is pull out method does not work. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we have to change our ways. But you know what's funny? Like he and I had this joke where we we're always like, we've never had a bad time ever. And we didn't. We never fought. We never had a bad time. And this one night, we were both like hangry. Everything was going wrong. We saw us and we thought the movie sucked. And like just it was the first time we had a bad time. And that was the night we got pregnant. Whoa. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I don't know what that was about, but. I'm trying to establish a pattern here. <laughs> so when we're ready, we just need to watch us. Get, yeah. Get hangry. Get, get hangry. Get really hungry <laughs> and then go for it. All right. While all right. eating raisins and drinking Jaeger. We just combine all the things and yeah. then hopefully. And well, I think you have to dress like raisins. Yeah. You've just oh, for the eroticism yeah, yeah. of yeah. it, yes. you know? It sounds yeah, really totally. sexy. Yeah. So silly. <laughs> so pruney. Well, oh that, that's exciting. That's really crazy. That's pretty life changing. I, I, I have told her that I want her to sort of like surprise and tell me. I want you were surprised, oh, yeah. but I, I want to be. I would love to surprise you, but, but you're gonna be a nervous. I'm wreck. gonna. Yeah, I feel like you would know. I'm so bad at hiding my emotions. Like if I feel excited about something, or if I'm sad, or even if I'm in a room and someone says something that's just stupid, like, you can see it on my face immediately, (laughs) and I think I'd probably be crying, too, you know, I think I'd be like, I just want to tell you, I don't think I could hold it back, Uh, I can, I can try, I love that you want that, you're such a sweetie, I mean, not today, we have to, like, sort of get married. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working on some things. We're seeing our first venue tomorrow. Oh, yeah. where are you looking? Uh, we're, I think we're going, like... It's two like hours two away hour. from here. It's a, it's a little bit of a drive. That's fine. But it's, like, a rustic kind of vibe yeah. that I think could be pretty. Nice. But everybody keeps asking us, how long are you going to wait before you decide to have kids? And we haven't really talked about it. Isn't that crazy how much people impose that on you immediately? Yeah. It's like, can I do one thing at a time? I just got yeah. married. Or well, I'm just getting married. Yeah. But I think that they're all, all <laughs> excited about it. And they're like, sure. you're not getting any younger. And I'm like, I know. Don't remind me. Oh, my gosh. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm in my 30s. Okay. So I'm, I'm ready at some point in the near future. Yeah. But I do know that I am kind of. But wait, we don't have. We have roommates. How? We'll we'll have to we'll have no, to no 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 we've got roommates. I, what I told you, you we we're not gonna have. <laughs> we, yeah. we have to wait. We have roommates. to kick them all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a one bedroom apartment too, and I'm just like, mm. oh, I don't know how long we're gonna survive in there. Oh. Which has been really hard for us too. We're both incredibly independent people, and we both you would think we were both only children. We're not, but like we act like only children. We just want space. Sometimes he's in the bathroom for a long time, and I'm like, I think he's just escaping me. (laughs) (laughs) I never do that. (laughs) I think that it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that that's going to be a really cool experience, and we've been talking about it a lot, too. Even whenever, you know, there is another person to consider, I don't think it really matters where we are until they're 
a little bit older. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, the kid won't care. We don't want to necessarily stay in L.A., and there's just so much to think about. But mm-hmm. I guess that doesn't really need to happen until yeah. toddler age or, like, school. I think yeah, school. it's like five. And we've been well, looking at, like, houses and cities or states, and, like, we're not really sure. We don't know where family's going to be. Yeah. But I have this sweet garage that I converted, and <laughs> I, you know, this is hard to give up. Plus, also being in L.A., and she yeah. hates cold weather, and she will get crazy with in yeah, cold I, weather. Yeah, I do not. If it's below 80, I'm like, it's freezing outside. Yeah. <laughs> but there's just so much to think about and so yeah. much to plan, and I can't imagine what's going through your head. Like, have you have you set up a little crib? Do you have, like, baby things you've already started to accumulate? I've actually been so stunned and blown away. And that's another thing. So I'll get spiritual. Like, I... We both had this, or he had a really like strong intuitive sense that we were going to have a baby together one day. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that he thought that, but he is just with it in that way. He's not identifying as Christian, but we definitely see eye to eye spiritually. And when I got pregnant and when I, like I said, my best friend was like, yes, this is right. And I knew she was saying it from a place of like strong conviction, like, I know you're crying, but this is supposed to happen. And that was comforting and terrifying at the same time. And um, I was terrified to tell him, too. I waited, like, five days, and (laughs) I cooked him. This Mm. Like, I always cook for him, but, like, this night I went all out and cooked, like, extra food. And he was like, wow, you're really spoiling me. And we had this whole habit of, like, drinking together and smoking a little weed together. And (laughs) he, like, passed me some weed, and I, like, went to the kitchen and, like, played it off and didn't smoke, obviously, and then come back out. So I feel so bad in retrospect because he was, like, kind of drunk and kind of high. And then I was, like, so... (laughs) But I was so scared. I was, like, I think I was trying to, like, lessen the blow or something. But he handled it beautifully and, you know, like, there was something about it that wasn't shocking to him, even though you still go on a journey after you get the initial blow. Mm -hmm. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. So basically with setting up stuff, if Gwyneth Paltrow walked in my house, she would like approve my baby stuff. It's like beautiful, expensive, luxurious stuff. And I just keep looking. And like I said, I'm in a one bedroom. I'm on unemployment right now. I feel so unworthy. But a huge part of it is that when I announced my pregnancy on YouTube, my community like one girl was like let's set up an online registry and then like 300 people liked it and it was the most mind-blowing thing every single day there there was like 11 boxes stacked outside of my door and it was very emotional and kind I was just like this is crazy that's gonna be a huge relief to you too no it was it was amazing so they filled in all of those gaps just with their generosity and then by the time my IRL friends came to my shower there was only like 10 things that they needed to fill in the gaps for so I you know would never pressure anyone to keep a baby but at the same time the way like all the provision came through for me is undeniable that's That's amazing Yeah, and I okay. do believe it'll continue on that path. So I you, hope so. You God find God out God. you get pregnant, you let him know. What do you yeah. do? Do you, do you, like, go to a doctor? What do you, when you get pregnant, what do you do? Oh, like, well, here's the question. Like, like, are you, like, yeah. Oh, well, that's another <laughs> reason I waited five days, because I did want to make an appointment first and, like, get the real, real Confirm, news. Confirm, like, yeah. the, the blood test. Yeah, I didn't want to be, like, yeah. Because um, a lot think... of times those those tests that you pee on, they can be false results a lot of the time they can I think it's much more common from what I know to get a false negative and I think it's really uncommon to get a false positive because you know it says like wait five minutes or something Mm -hmm. but when you're pregnant that plus sign just pops up immediately Mm -hmm. I would still I would still want to get the blood test yeah yeah because in my head I'm like what if yeah. Well, right mm-hmm. after I drove to CVS and I took like two more oh. and then my friend Haven was also like, stop taking pregnancy tests. You're <laughs> pregnant. Yeah. And then I still went to the doctor. And I think a part of that, too, was just delaying having to tell him. I was like, well, we don't know yet. And my friends are all like, yes, we do. though." <laughs> so what do you know? Like, so when eventually I'm assuming you went to a doctor or something. Like, what do you learn then? 
everything. It's crazy. You don't know, like... I'm sure I still don't even know the half of it, but... You don't know, like, the sex or anything five days in. No, you have a little penis there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, here is... uh, I don't even like talking about this because it, like, makes me nervous, but basically there's a chromosome test. As soon as you're 30 something they label you as a geriatric pregnancy (laughs) which is the most offensive thing ever oh no yeah and then they also label you high risk so it's annoying and it can make you feel paranoid but at the same time it's kind of a privilege because they are down to give you extra tests and they're down to like babysit you more and you have more appointments and stuff which I thought was a plus but there's one thing that they do which is a chromosome test to see if there's Down syndrome or other chromosomal disorders. And you really have to advocate yourself when you're in the hospital because, you know, I don't want to get all conspiratorial on Western medicine, but it's just genuinely true. Like because our healthcare system is based on money and it's a business instead of an actual like service to us. Um, they will try to upsell you on things that you don't need. And this chromosome test, I ended up doing my own research because my greatest fear was actually getting a false positive. And I really wanted to know how common that was. And some women have gotten abortions and then found out later that their their baby was perfectly healthy. Yeah, because of this specific chromosome test. And it costs like thousands of dollars. And also my being on Medi-Cal and everything. Or I didn't have Medi-Cal at the time. I just had really bad, like low-grade insurance. And I was going to have to pay out of pocket. And I was like, so anyway, just research this test. And then you find out that when you get a negative, again, it's very, you can like hang your hat on it. It's almost always true. But false positives were really, really common. And I was like, I can't imagine the anxiety of getting a false positive and thinking there's something wrong with my child the whole time. And I just decided to not add that stress. Um, Yeah. Isn't there a risk with that too? Like some of these tests are so invasive that they can actually cause complications. Yeah. As I would, thank you. That was another part of it. So basically you take the blood test first and if it comes back that there is a high potential or they're thinking it's a yes, then your next step is to, I forget what it's called, but they basically put a needle in you right. and actually draw out amniotic fluid, I believe. And then they test like that. Amniocentesis or something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. My mom had, I think she was going to have one of those done. And was labeled as, like, potentially having a problem. Okay. And I remember her finding that out with my sister on a Friday. And then the doctor's office was closed Saturday, Sunday. And then they called her back Monday saying, never mind, you're fine. Oh, my god. But gosh. she spent the entire weekend bawling her eyes out, so stressed, so worried, thinking that my sister had Down syndrome. Yeah, see, that's what I thought I was going to go through for, like, nine months. How long ago was that? Oh, 11 years ago? Okay, yeah, because I was like, I I hope they... 20 years ago. She was, I was 11 when she was born, that's where I got the number 11, but it was a long time ago. Well, my mom's doctor recommended she abort because my dad was older than my mom by 13 years, and because there was, like, one person in our family with Down syndrome. Like they, so. I, I can't believe they would recommend that so freely, so quickly. I know. It's, it's a different time. terrifying. Yeah. <sighs> but, but now, still, I mean, like, there's something arguably even more scary about this time because they give you back a test that says, yes, this is an issue. And then you have to make the decision. So the next step after the blood is the needle. And that does have a risk of miscarriage. And you could miscarry right. a perfectly healthy baby just because you were scared of whatever. And I, that's the one thing I knew I wasn't going to do. And I was What's like, okay. What's the needle? It's where they draw out, like, from the baby's oh, environment. The oh. amniotic fluid, they, like, will take oh. a sample yeah. and test it. And yeah. I, I've heard of that leading to miscarriage. Mm-hmm. So, so. And, that, and I was like, I'm not going to do that. So worst case scenario, I get a false positive. I'm not going to do that test. So what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Have eight months of, like, fear. That's can't That can't be healthy for... No. The baby either when you're pregnant. So that was the first like really independent decision I made on my journey of being like, I'm just going to decide. I don't care what they say. I'm not going to do that. I'll keep that in mind whenever I'm labeled a geriatric. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It will happen. Uh Uh-huh. You will be too. It's crazy. (laughs) 
Uh, I'm like, can't you guys use a different term that's like a little less offensive, please? Yeah, that's terrible. Oh, by the way, cheers with our water. Everybody is is drinking water today. Oh, mine is vodka. But oh. Oh. <laughs> Woo, cheers. So you have, have talked a little bit about how this isn't really a, a blissful experience, yeah. as some might describe. What have been like some of the most frustrating or, I don't know, discouraging parts for you? Okay, so there's like two things. One of them, I mean, there's many things, but two of the things are that this is a list of my favorite stuff. Uh, wine, weed, tequila, whiskey, sushi, soft cheese, hot yoga, hot showers, hot tubs. What else? Wait, hot, you can't Bike riding. Hot showers? You can't even have a hot shower? Mm, yeah. They, like, recommend you, like, chill out on the hot shower. <laughs> and I need sushi. And, and, like, I don't know. I don't need wine, but I really like it. Yeah. No, I've seen you drinking wine in yeah. your videos. So this list is <laughs> aligned with things that you cannot do when you're pregnant, <sighs> which is just. And uh, so with that, it's just like, okay, am I just the worst brat ever? Like, oh, really? You're going to complain because you have to abstain from this list of things. But actually being in L.A., I think you guys probably know, like pursuing creative pursuits, being on YouTube, being vulnerable in all of these spaces with your art you need a release. You need something that makes you feel like a human being again. And I would never say that I am reliant on alcohol at all, but I, I call myself like a European drinker. It's like if I have a really intense day at work or something, I just want a nice glass of whiskey and I sit there and sip it. And it's just like, it's a part of a ritual. It makes me feel like a human being again. And just the buildup of not having that release for month after month after month you have to find other things to supplement that. And if I were to do a period of sobriety in normal life, I would then jump on my bike and ride my ass off or go to a million hot yoga classes and be like, this is my supplement. And it's like, okay, but I can't do those either. Okay, dang, like what can I do? And honestly, through this whole nine months, I never found a release that was adequate for me. I feel very pent up and like I haven't been myself this whole time and then those things are relational experiences as well you take those classes you drink your drinks with your friends or your lover and like they're ritualistic and they bring you into community so without that you're also kind of ostracized and I had very lonely periods of time and I never wanted to put restrictions on my boyfriend I really wanted him to be like I'm like it's not going to make me more happy to have you miserable with me like please go out with your friends do your thing but you know when he's out and he comes home drunk and happy I was never mad at him but I was just like must be nice Mm -hmm. you know like and just not having that is lonely and another reason it's been hard to have that is because your body just starts aching after a certain period like I'm finding probably two months ago after like 7 p.m or something I just start being in a lot of pain I start getting really bad back spasms and I just can't even think about going out plus it's a weird look to see some (laughs) big ass pregnant girl in a bar you're just like go home what are you doing here So are we gonna party uh, now? <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying so is, call let's us go crazy. Night <laughs> yeah. After you have your baby. Oh uh, wait, don't you have to how, wait a little with breast milk? I was or am just I wrong? gonna ask mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. how long do you have to continue this? I mean, indefinitely. Basically, like I really want to breastfeed, and I I want to do it. I. <laughs> I mean, I just hope I love everything more than pregnancy because I would outright say I hated pregnancy. I really did. So my dream and ambition and hope is that I'm going to love seeing his name is Valentine. I'm just going to mm-hmm. like love seeing Valentine latch to me and hold him and smell him and have that bonding. But I'm also being realistic because I know a lot of women have a hard time breastfeeding and don't enjoy that experience. And it is a lot of hours. They say it's more than a full time job the amount of time you're pumping and you have the baby at your breast. So there is a wonderful technique called pump and dump, which I highly (laughs) anticipate doing, which is like you just get as much milk out as possible. And then if you want to go out one night and drink, then you dump um, maybe like two pumps or something. And then I have these like strips that test for alcohol and milk. And then you just like make sure it's gone. That's really cool. I was going to ask how long, like let's say you go out and have two glasses of wine. Yeah. How long do you think you'd have to wait after that to be 
clear. I've I've heard you just have to do one dump. And okay. I had a friend that was extra cautious and she did like three. But even that is like possible, I think, if you've stored up enough milk so the baby has <laughs> food yeah. for another day. So like long story short, drinking will not become a part of my routine in my life again until breastfeeding is over, which could be in like a year. <laughs> so much work. Yeah. But I'm excited to just be one person, which is what I was going to say. The other thing I've really, really struggled with is bodily autonomy, which I've never heard someone talk about before. What does but that mean? It's like just having ownership of your body as your own, making your own independent decisions because you want to because it's your body and it belongs to you. My body has not belonged to me for 10 months. And by the way, you're not pregnant for nine months. You're pregnant for 10 months. Really? Yeah. Why? Because the way imperial, it's imperial confusing, metric? yeah, because they trick zero, you into thinking it's less. Yeah, it's because they the way they calculate it, they calculate it by your period, your last period, versus like the day that you got pregnant, and uh. it just it works out differently. I mean, you can be pregnant for more or less, but basically, you go into ten months. Like this is technically my tenth month of pregnancy. Wow. Yeah, but um. So basically, it's just that every decision I've made has had to have Valentine in the mix. Every single one. That is like whether or not I stand outside mm -hmm. when people are smoking or just, I don't know. Yeah, just, I feel like I'm going to be paranoid, you know, because yeah. I would be worried. I'm 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 pretty careful with myself. But Am I'm, I allowed to party? I'm definitely more reckless with oh, myself than I would be. Oh, that's a good question. Can I party? Baby. Well, I think I'll yes. feel the way that she is, like... You know? But I will cheers to you. <laughs> Don't get yourself slapped across the face. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is, have you heard of the red tent mm -mm. thing? Um, <laughs> I'm going to sound like an idiot, but at a certain point in history, they had what was called the red tent. And that was when women were on their periods, like menstruating, oh. I believe, or giving birth all of the women in the community would come together under the red tent and support that woman and be there with her and like go through that experience with her. And that is difficult in a relationship dynamic because you're going to potentially, if you're anything like me, be desperate for him to understand how much physical pain your body is in. Like it's physically painful, like every single day. And you just want to look at someone and feel like you feel me, right? Like you understand how hard it is to like not just casually grab a drink with a friend or to make these sacrifices. But I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of women in my life have been like, well, this is kind of why even if the red tent seems like it was like a fucked up sort of thing, like alienating women when they were menstruating or having a baby. But in the more beautiful sense, if you flip it around, it was because those are the only people that can relate to their experience and you can look your man in the eye and my David and I have had a million conversations like that and he's been so empathetic and kind and patient um with me and my emotions which you know are not his fault and I just always appreciated him being like I'm so sorry and I just want to tell you that I have no idea how you feel and that's really the most validating thing he can say to me and I need him to say that to me. I will take note of that. Yeah. And I will. I, will use <laughs> I was going to say, I can imagine. Cause if, if they said something like trying to relate, like, Oh, I've had pain before. I, that would be frustrating. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Know. He hasn't stepped on that, <laughs> that minefield. I've heard of, and of, it would have been a minefield. Yeah, I've heard of women saying that that's been a big pet peeve. Oh, you uh, heard I broke my back. Okay. Like you're sitting too close to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but is it? I, I kind of wonder too because that's got to be an emotional roller coaster. So that has to put a lot of stress on a relationship. Mm. And do you have any tips for both? I guess both people going through something like that, how to kind of stay bonded. Yeah. I'm trying to think what we did. I mean, again, just his humility through the process have, has been a godsend. Like, that's really the best he could do for me, and I appreciated that so much. And then I think 
I heard another uh, mom friend of mine, she like pulled him by the collar and was just like, just know no matter how much you're doing, you're not doing anywhere as near as much as she is. And I saw you, David, scurrying around mm-hmm. and like setting up all of this stuff and being really attentive. And it's like that spirit and energy about you is going to be so beneficial and beautiful Aww. because it's like, I think when you're tra- feeling trapped in your body or you're having these experiences and you just see him hustling to make sure he's accommodating for whatever pain you're in, like my boyfriend's been amazing at that. Like all like I just make all of these sounds and I'm not tr- even trying to get attention. It's like you just bend over and you're like, because you can't breathe. And, um, you know, he's been wonderful to be like, let me grab you a pillow. Let me grab you some water. And those are the littlest gestures, but they mean so much because you're mm-hmm. like, you just feel supported. You I know? plan on a full a full trench coat, <laughs> custom built with like olives and pickles. I have olive and, and pickle cravings every month on my period, so I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Although my mom, when she was pregnant, hated the smell of popcorn. Like could not be around popcorn. <laughs> but normally she loved it. So yeah, sometimes was, I guess it, it could switches. Mm-hmm. Have, you have you had any, yeah. Do you have any okay. aversions or cravings? Well, in the first three months, I was nauseous 24 hours, seven days a week. For three months, nonstop. And I would wake up in the middle of the night trying not to barf. Did you get sick? I threw up one time. But I also, tr- like, am desperate not to throw up when I have to throw up. So I feel like I probably would have thrown up every day. Mm-hmm. But I, like, forced myself not to. Um, So that was delightful. So then you're living off of, like, saltines and, like, stale pieces of bread with a little bit of butter like anything you can stomach and you can't take anything for like the nausea it's a good question the answer is no like i was sick for like two or three weeks recently because there's really nothing i could take that wouldn't have a negative effect on the baby so is is there any research on like cbd in pregnancies or Uh, that's a good question and that is a huge problem actually because well it's the same thing with marijuana like there's so many times i just really desperately wanted that because i again i'm not reliant on that it's something that I have anxiety like everyone else in the world. And that's one thing that's always helped with that. And pregnancy anxiety was like through the roof at times for oh, very no. like tangible reasons. Oh no. So um, not having that was difficult, but like the research on drinking alcohol is much more accessible. I think any American doctor will tell you don't do it. Just be safe. Not sorry. But a lot of women I've talked to in person will be like, I had a glass a night, even. That was, like, the most I've heard an admission, someone saying they drank every single night. Yeah. But um, most of my friends say they did it once a month or, like, once, mm-hmm. every once in a blue moon. And I have been drinking a little bit of wine towards the end. Um, but as far as marijuana, everything is changing so rapidly, like, all of the strains and the way they're growing it. And there's no way, like, to do a proper study of something, you have to do, I think, 10 or 15 years or something. Mm -hmm. So there's not even kids that are old enough that they could have even studied on because marijuana has been illegal for so long. Yeah. And they can't even control that experiment because of how rapidly they change the strains and the way they're making it. So it's like an impossible goose chase on figuring out if that's okay. That's crazy. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck to you. Uh, oh no, no, good luck to you. Yeah, no, it's really true. I'm gonna be. At I'm gonna be in point. for it, but I, I will do my best. I'll do my best too. Yeah. When we get there, if yeah. we hopefully we get there, you know. I had uh, one of my best friends said something really humbling because I was like crying and losing it and was just like David doesn't understand and he can't like he's not being supportive enough or whatever and she's never wanted a baby ever and she was like she's like I hear all the sacrifices you're making but you are making someone that never wanted to have a baby have a baby she's like can you just give him a little credit for that and I was like Oh, dang. And then there's things that follow after that where you're like, okay, I see how much he's like accommodating and how hard this is for him as well in different, totally different ways. Mostly just by having to bounce off of my crazy ass during Mm. this whole time. (laughs) Dang. Yeah. That's pretty wild. It really changed our relationship. And you drove here, right? Yeah. Is that, can you, you can drive? That's fine. I love that question. (laughs) I had a girlfriend say that to me recently. She was like, do you need an Uber? Can I pick you up? I'm like, I, I'm a human still. You can still drive. Like, 
It's do one you, thing I can still do. You drive yourself to the this, hospital. What about the seatbelt thing? Isn't there like a thing you're not supposed to put it? I've been putting it under my belly because uh, that is that's okay. actually terrifying. Yeah, I I've saw. heard. Yeah, I've yeah. heard something about seatbelt placement being weird. Mm. Yeah, there's so much to think about. I know. I'm trying to think. I like want to leave you with positive. I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I feel like we'll have to see you again after. Yeah, and then get a new perspective. But. You mean like the youngest guest we've ever had on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Aww. I mean, the positive is like, okay, the first time I ever felt him kick was crazy. It was oh. so fun and wild. How far along were you when that happened? Oh, I forget. It was it was like, oh, as second trimester for sure. I don't remember exactly which month. Mm. I feel like I waited a longer than it said you would have to wait. And I was just dying for it, especially because I was in so much unhappiness um, that I was just like, just show your presence, mm-hmm. like show yourself to me so I can relate to the fact that you're in there. And um, you feel flutters at first, which kind of feels like when you're nervous, but then you don't feel nervous at all. So you're just like, OK, that's weird. I think that's a baby moving. but You're not sure. And then um one morning I woke up and like a foot jutted out. Like I could just like see this like, and I was like, and I like started, I like got a little teary eyed because I was like, ah, there he is. Like he finally showed himself to me. And it was funny because my boyfriend was really scared and freaked out of like touching it at first. And he was asleep and I just like put his hand there and then he got kicked. And he's like, what are you doing? Why did you do that to me? (laughs) I'd be excited about that. Yeah. So I feel him every day and I, that has helped a lot. Like I sing to him in the shower and I'm begging him to please come out and go (laughs) easy on me. And, you know, so I feel more connected in the end. Can I ask like a more like, I don't even know how to classify this question. Can you have sex? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. You're supposed to. That's what I thought. Yeah. Especially in the end, it's really helpful to help the move things along which is also beautiful and i count as something very spiritual that like um oxytocin release is the thing that gets it started so that's not to say i actually read something about how someone was classifying birth as sexual and i was like that's interesting because obviously it is very sex-based and that's how you invite the experience in the beginning and actually i had a false alarm the other night i was in the hospital And I was like, I told my boyfriend, I was like, it sounds like a brothel in here. Like, because like the moaning and everything, it sounded like women in rooms, like in a brothel. And I was like, it sounds really erotic and beautiful. The sounds that they're making. I'm sure a lot of the sounds get more crazy at the end. But um, so when I read that thing about birth being sexual, I was like, that's really interesting. And then if you like stimulate your nipples and release oxytocin like if you have a partner like kissing on you or whatever or even if you're doing kind of like sexual acts if you can stand it when you're in that pain in the beginning it's supposed to all like really relax your body and help the baby come out i can't imagine being in pain and with a bunch of doctors (laughs) you just like all right kiss my neck (laughs) my love (laughs) <laughs> or or being in any kind of mood for that, I'll be like, get away from me! You did this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. Let I mean, I've done a lot of research. Yeah. I think like because you what you have to wait till your contractions are three minutes apart before you go in the hospital, and um because otherwise you'll be there for a zillion hours and it's horrible for everybody. So. I have no idea how I'll feel. I'm talking out of nothing. But I have done a lot of research and watched a lot on it. And I'm like, I don't know. I'll try it. Like, if I do these low moaning moot things and he is, like, just kissing me and, like, doing things that are more sensual and, like, feel good, hopefully that will, like, counterbalance or, like, remind me that it's supposed to be pleasant experience. Not pleasant. That's not the right word. But it's, like, it's a natural. <laughs> right. And, and even all of the midwives say basically like they don't use the word sensuality, but I would where uh, when you're in pain, it's like someone is supposed to counteract it with something sensual, a massage, playing with your hair, like that sort of thing. Do you know like where you're going to have a kid? Like you have a hospital? Yeah. Which, which one? Uh, Kaiser. Okay. I was, uh, I was Tarzana hot 
whatever the Tarzan one. I was just gonna see if I was the same one. I was really close to, <laughs> to LA. I was yeah. just up the street from here. Well, if my water breaks now, maybe we can just head. Yeah, we can that. go to my old hospital. <laughs> we can take you. Might still be in the records there. <laughs> uh, Aww. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, natural birth. I'm assuming you're discussing. I'm gonna. Tr- yeah, I'm trying for it. I've also done a lot of research on epidurals and pitocin. And anyone listening, I. I mean, I don't even care. I don't even have time or energy to judge anyone else's birthing experience or mother experience unless they're like backhanding their kid in a 7-Eleven parking lot or something. Like, I'm just like, I have nothing to say to you. Do your thing. Do what you think is right. That said, for me personally, I, my mom, my aunt had a three hour birth and my mom had a five and a six hour birth. That's pretty fortunate. It's so fortunate. Yeah. If I had the blessing of that, then it's like, okay, I'd rather go for that. And basically Pitocin, they say is natural, but it, it, it induces you. So it oh, like yeah. causes contractions and like tells the baby like it's time to get out of here. And then, but usually it speeds up the contractions at such a crazy rate that you're in way more pain than you would be if you were doing it naturally. Mm. So then you usually get an epidural because you can't handle that pain. And then the epidural numbs you. So then you're like contracting, but you're not really sure. Like you, you can't you follow your body. Are you going to do all of this? Have you... These are the things I don't want to do. Oh, you don't want to do them. Yeah. But that said, again, if a woman chooses to do that, like... God bless. I understand completely why you wouldn't want to be in excruciating pain. But I'm like, I could have 30 hours on Pitocin and Epidural of like a lot of medical intervention and moderate pain. Or I could be in three to six hours of excruciating pain. And a part of me just wants to choose the shorter path. Mm -hmm. And then I also want it to, I think it would be like psychedelic and crazy. I kind of don't want to take that experience away by being intervened with drugs i mean i don't know we'll it see it seems like you've you've done a lot of research and all of this and kind of know what it's because i'm bored as hell <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i have nothing else to do i was c-section my mom wanted that with all of my me and my sisters i was c-section but emergency c-section and so was my sister she tried my mom tried i was mm-hmm. upside down well actually right side up babies are supposed to be upside down yeah, yeah. i was just sitting up and my sister was backwards oh uh, my poor mom Mm. Well, yeah, that's the thing, too. Some things are completely unavoidable. And that's the best advice people have given me as well. Like, not only to not judge others, but don't judge yourself. Like, that's my goal, to go natural. Like I said, I have two women that did it in my family, and they both had very positive experiences. So I'm just going off of that. And it's like... Hopefully it's genetic for you and maybe not for me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But if someone needs intervention, it's like, yeah, of course, please do your thing. Do what you got to do. And if I need intervention, I'm going to obviously be open to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you've had a, a good experience so far, at least with health. Every yeah. time you've gone in, everything's mm-hmm. been really healthy and, and looking great. So mm-hmm. I know it's really I'm sure that will all continue. you can ask for. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. good luck. We're <laughs> here you. to, when you're ready to party, we, <laughs> I, I, will, I will make you guys margaritas or whatever you guys Oh, have. I can't wait for my first margarita. It's going to be so delicious. Yeah, you said tequila was one of your favorites. Mm-hmm. We'll, Love it. We'll make sure, you know, you d- do your feeding thing. And if you have a, a night you want to pump and dump, Hit me up. <laughs> Hit me up. I don't live very far. <laughs> yeah, I definitely will. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. I hope I have a newfound appreciation for things. And sorry to get biblical, but like last thing I'll say is like I when I had this uh, close call, I or not close call, um, false alarm. I was reading this book by Rachel Held Evans, who is actually deceased now. She died very spontaneously in her thirties, and um, but she's a progressive Christian like myself. And I just happened to be reading and she starts talking about pregnancy and she was talking about how like they wandered before the promised land for 40 years before ever making it there. And Jesus was fasting in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and a woman gestates for 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. And she was just talking about how excruciating all of those 40 time periods were biblically. And it just made me feel so at ease and happy because I was like okay this wasn't a time of fun and pleasure and like feeling like myself and enjoying but there must have been so much expansion and I feel like that will be revealed to me later I'll I'll be able to look back and be like oh that's what I learned that's what I got from this and 
you know, that's why it was so hard in these different ways, not with health, but with emotions, relationships, all of it. So that's really what I want. Nothing. I don't believe anything is ever done in vain. So I'm just like praying. I figure out why I've hated this so much later. (laughs) Do you think you might do it again? (sighs) That's the problem. I've like always wanted a daughter and I have her name picked out and everything. And I'm not going to tell you because no one can steal it. (laughs) It's really good. And, um, but I've always had a vision of a daughter and I'm like, I don't know if that's a vision or if that's a, it's just something I thought I wanted. And then you might have another joyful (laughs) 10 months. At least I know what I'll be getting into, I guess. And I think people have very different experiences. Yeah. Each pregnancy can be different for a person. For the same person I've heard. Yeah. It's been totally different. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you never know. Also, if I'm in a different place in my life, like who knows? I don't know. But we'll see. I'm definitely putting an IUD in the moment. I, like, <laughs> if I can put it in right after I give birth, just I mean, like, don't let this happen again. If they're in there, they could probably just. I know. Yeah. Like, just a do two for one. Like, what kind of <laughs> work out a deal? You like a discount on the second <laughs> one? Like a buy one, get one kind of deal? Wow. Could work. Yeah. That's crazy. So we'll see. TBD. I'll let you know how the first one goes. I'm excited for you. You got this. Me too. I'm I'm sure it's going to be. I can't imagine that feeling that you'll have once you see him for the first time. I know. I keep crying when I think about it. I cry. I cry thinking about it. I watched um, a friend of mine have, she did like a birth video. And like that moment when she held her daughter, she just like cried. And I was like, oh yeah. I was like crying watching it. Yeah. I can't imagine that feeling. It's got to be like the best feeling in your entire life. I like when you see the girl's face and she's just like tripping. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that's, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but that has it just like, it's going to be crazy. I can't wait. Then you have like an extra thing that you take home that wasn't <laughs> with you before. And like, you got to yeah. take care of it. And then- My best friend said that to me too. She was like walking out of the hospital and we're like, we just, we can leave with this. Like, why are you letting us take this? <laughs> it's just like so crazy. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Thank I'm you. excited. I'm excited for you guys, too. Oh, I like, Thank well, you. I appreciate anyone, too, just, like, go, go in with open eyes. Like, this is one experience. You should listen to a dozen more. Mm-hmm. Don't bring any fear into it. And just, like, you know, try mm-hmm. to enjoy it. <laughs> what will be, will be. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Well, thank you for telling us all these things and being so open about everything. (sighs) Yeah. Thanks for the catharsis. Mm. There's a lot of shame around being like, I hated being pregnant, especially because I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Like, I know it, you know. So it's hard to say, but I think it's worth saying, I guess. Everybody's experience is different and yours is valid. And I, I think probably because nobody talks about it, that women out there that have the same experience as you feel afraid or alone and this is probably really helpful yeah i hope so shout yeah. out to everyone having a hard time <laughs> i like, feel you are there like podcasts or groups for for uh the the partners yeah <laughs> really do you need a support group? i need a support group. i know too bad you didn't know my david before and yeah yeah <laughs> you can commiserate later in time yeah yeah <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast yeah. and talking about all these things. I'm so excited to keep up with you. And, and for those of you guys listening, how can they follow your story and keep up with you online? Oh, yeah. Everything is God is Gray, G-R-E-Y. So I have God is Gray, the podcast, which is on all platforms. God is Gray YouTube, at God is Gray on Instagram. What I, is that? What, gray? What, what is that? Because a lot of Christians look at things with black and white. Oh, okay. I get and it. Yeah. Here on earth, we're contending with the gray. So I talk uh, about all of the gray areas. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone should go support her and follow her. And I can't wait to see what happens for you next. Very excited for you. Thank and you. <laughs> thanks to everybody listening and supporting our podcast. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, if you if you are listening, uh, first off, huge thank you to everybody who supports the podcast on Patreon and makes it possible, patreon.com slash Jack and David. Thank you to everybody who has left reviews or follows us on any of the apps. Uh, that is super helpful. And uh, thanks for, for listening to a Christian, an atheist, and a Jew around <laughs> around a tiny little table in, the, in my garage recording studio. Sounds like the beginning of a joke. Uh, yeah, sh- uh, later, we the three of us should walk into a bar. <laughs> See what go. happens. <laughs> yeah, We right. will. We'll celebrate on, on a pump and dump night. There we go. There we go. 
All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, yeah. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.